Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, God is doing amazing things in your life this week. And I've got his word to share with you today. But before going to today's broadcast, can we release our faith and call forth or rather make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. I'll share with you what Jesus said yesterday in John chapter 8 and verse 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I want you to make this sink in your heart. You know, when, when the Lord brings his word to you, mm, you remember what God told Joshua. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night so that you will observe to do everything that is written in it. So that you will observe to do everything that is written in it. So now the Lord Jesus comes and says, Hey, I am the light of the world. Now, we've had, this is not the first time you're hearing this scripture, I'm sure. But have you sat down deeply? Have you sat down to meditate deeply on what he meant by that? How could he have made that kind of statement? Is either it is true or Jesus is lying. But we know that Jesus will never lie. Praise God. So now he says, I am the light of the world. Whoa. Whoa. You know, you want to now think how people are walking in darkness. You want to now wonder how people have learned how to master darkness. You can actually master darkness. When I mean master darkness, I'm not saying take out darkness. Some people have mastered the act of living in darkness. Some people have mastered succeeding in darkness. You know, like they say, in the land of the blind, a one-eyed one -eyed man becomes the champion. So when people learn to move around in darkness, when people even learn how to succeed in darkness, so you walk into a dark room, I say, why is this room dark? They say, we're used to it. I say, what do you mean you're used to it? Okay, can you get something to me? The person walks straight and gets it to you. Right? They're like, how did you know your way around? Because I know the place. It's my crib. It's my house. So I know my way around. Hey, they have only mastered that darkness. But the darkness is still there. Even in their mastery of that darkness, there are still a lot of things they can never see. So now when Jesus said, I am the light of the world, he's saying, if I am not there, if I am not involved, hey, you're in darkness. You're in darkness. There are no two ways about it. I was telling yesterday about the city that John saw. And he says, look, Jesus will be the light of that city. It means everything in that city will come because of him and will come from him. Everything. Now, if that is true, it is important then that today we start living our lives by him. That is the only way you can tell that you are living in the light. Because everything, he says, if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness. Everyone who's not following Jesus is walking in darkness. It doesn't matter how you think they are succeeding. They are in darkness. They are succeeding in darkness. And only time will tell. Now you begin to understand why he said, anyone who does his will will abide forever. Why? 
because the one who does his will was doing it in light. And because you're doing it in light, you know exactly what you're doing. And what you're doing will not be destroyed. It will abide forever. Everything that is done in the darkness, hey, because there is no way you do things perfect in the dark. There is no way. You will make mistakes. And God is so, you see, God is so perfect. He will never allow imperfection in his work. You may act or do things in an imperfect way, but you know God is going to change that thing to the perfect one. You don't want to do the work that God is going to change. You don't want to build a house that God is going to come. You know, have you ever, you know, we see these things around us, you know, growing up, whatever neighborhood you grew up in, and then someone's just made some money and he felt he's the richest man on the street. And so he decides to build the finest house on the streets. Now, this was said 20 years ago. And he prides himself as the owner of the finest house on the street. But life continues. Soon, others will get more money than him and will build more beautiful houses than his own. And what happens? His own becomes the former finest house praise God. and hey now he may not even have what it takes to compete with those that are rising at this time so what happened at that time he built the house he couldn't see the future so he felt according to the light that he had he was doing the best thing and he felt this was life but just a few years down the line his house becomes something nobody even wants to look at. Why? He built that house in darkness. Lights. When you do things in the light, that means doing this in Jesus. I tell you the truth. See, when you build, you know, Jesus himself said it. He said, when you build, when you live according to his word, what's going to happen to you? He said, the rains will come, the winds, the storm is going to come, but your building will be standing. Why? Because it was done in the light. Now, it was done in, now because you, it was done in the light, it was done in the clear view. You know the right places to touch. You know the right things to fix because he is the light that you are following. And because he is the light. Now, now also, you know, there are different kinds of lights under which things are viewed. See? So you have the microscopic lights. Now, that light makes you see things that your, uh, your little eyes your, you might not see. So you look at things under the microscope. That's a light. And like, whoa! You see, I don't know how many of you remember when, um, it, it, I think that was secondary school now. Yeah, you know, when, when you visit the lab and then it's the, the, the teacher how to use a microscope, how we were all eager to get things. And then, you know, something that's so normal. And then you view it on the microscope, you see things moving. You say, what? They said, those are gems. Oh, whoa! In this thing. Praise God. Why? With your normal light, you will never see them. But then you put it under that microscope, you begin to see things move. Now, you want to wonder, what is the true light? Now, who's telling the truth? Normal light or the microscopic light? And then you have things like um, um, the x-rays. With normal light, you cannot see beyond your skin. But then you put it under the x-ray light, you begin to see beyond the skin. You see the bones. Then we have ultrasound. It's also a light. They put it and they begin to see things on that screen that your eyes will not see. 
that light. Before that light came, you felt all we can see is what we see. You see that now? But then that light comes and tells you, hey, this is what is inside your body. And say, how? I say, look at it. See this thing here? This is it. This is it. Look at it. Pregnant women use it to see their children. Hey, look at your son. See his head. See his eyes. See his nose. His hands are moving. Like, whoa. <laughs> you are viewing that baby under that light. Take that light away, you will never see. You can only view that baby from your feelings. Now, Jesus is telling us that he is the light of the world. Brothers and sisters, we need to, we need to learn to walk in this light. We need to learn to follow. Why? Because you don't want to walk in darkness. And so I'm so glad Jesus said, anyone who follows me will have the light of life. So what does that mean? I can actually start turning on the light by myself. I don't have to walk in darkness. I don't have to pray so that I will see light. I've been given the light of life. It means by that light, I can see life clearly. So how do we walk by his light? When we begin, to, I told you yesterday, when we begin to walk by his instruction, by his command, by his principles. When he begins to instruct us. And listen, the Bible says without faith, it, it is impossible to please God. Then he says, anyone who comes to God must believe that God is. And that God is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Now, believing that God is, what does it mean? It means you coming to that point where you know that when I talk to the Lord, he will talk back to me. And when you read scriptures, you know, sometimes I wonder how, how, how people think. You read the scriptures and then you see certain experiences people had with God. And it's difficult for them to believe that they can have same experience. You read in your Bible how angels came to help people. And, and, and you saw the interaction people had with angels. Was it just Bible days? Do you believe angels still exist today? Of course they do. And they are here to help us. Now, when you don't know that you have that kind of help, Already you're living in darkness. You're living in darkness. And he said that darkness will affect everything that you do. And think of how many people are in darkness. You know, when the Lord began to talk to me about this, like I said, I've known the scripture for many years, but then the Lord began to talk to me about this. He said, do you know I'm the light of the world? And you see, when he talks to you, your whole head just opens. Like, yeah. Whoa. I, I, I began to imagine the darkness that many people are in. Because they are not walking by the light. They are in this world. But they are walking in so much darkness. Jesus is not involved in their lives. And it's darkness. I began to say, so do you know how many things are going to be lost? Do you know how many things are going to be thrown away? Because they are useless. How many plants, how many things that have been set up that have lasted for many years that will be thrown away? Because they are done in darkness. Anything that is not under his light, anything that he does not illuminate, because that's what light does. That thing is darkness. How long will people remain in darkness? How long will people live and walk in darkness? 
trying to walk by their own self. Brothers and sisters, if it is not in Jesus, it is in darkness. If Jesus is not instructing it, if Jesus, ah, think about, you know, you, are, you know, sometimes you're just grateful to God that you may not have known these things clearly, but in your walk, day-to-day -day walk, you have been guided to walk in the light. You begin to remember that, oh, I'll I tell you something. If you get married without Jesus, there is a strong possibility that that marriage is being done in darkness. Not only that, you see, if Jesus starts you on a thing, remember, he's the author and finisher. If Jesus starts you on a thing, you need to keep that thing alive, walking in the light. I wanted to get married. I prayed, oh God, please reveal who I want to get married to. And then God showed me the person. Wow, praise God. And then I got married. But now, two years down the line, we're having some serious issues. Hey, are you walking in the light where that marriage is? Or did you walk in the light to get to the marriage? So you married the right person quite all right. But marrying the right person is not enough. The walk of the marriage or you may get a job by Jesus, which is getting a job in the light. But then to sustain that job, you still need to walk in the light. So this thing is not just about Jesus lead me to find something. It's a complete walk day after day. And you must learn to wait for him. You must learn to wait for his light. When he speaks to you, he's revealing light. When he shows you what to do, that is his light. When his word comes to you concerning a thing and it's instructive, that is his light. So you must wait for his light. So you don't end up walking in darkness. And my time is up today. Praise God. I pray for you right now. Lord, there is so much darkness in the world. But I pray for everyone watching and listening to me. That by your mercy, you will navigate their life out of darkness. And that they will not walk in darkness, but in the light. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.